everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel, guys. Coming up for you today is a Barca News Roundup and we do have plenty of important topics to address. We're going to be talking about Danny Alves' controversial suspension after his red card against Atletico Madrid. We're also going to be talking about Coutinho's recent form and why that may have moved him closer to a permanent move away. We're also going to be discussing Adama Traore with yet more more encouraging news on our brand new signing, along with the latest on Ronald Araujo's contract situation and why hopefully we'll be receiving some good news soon. It is all coming your way, so let's get to it. But if we do start with that Danny Alves news, because obviously on Sunday in that brilliant win over Atletico Madrid, Danny Alves was sent off. It was a bad time in the game to lose a man, and indeed we suffered because of it. And obviously Alves, when he was going off, he was absolutely fuming that he'd been sent off in that way. But I think actually both he and the club are even more angry about the suspension that has followed. Because yesterday it was confirmed by La Liga that Dani Alves will now serve a two-match suspension for that red card. And that is a really, really damaging blow because it means he'll miss back-to-back -back La Liga away games this weekend against Espanyol and then a tricky trip to Mestalla to face Valencia, which is a blow that Barca have simply not accepted. Because also yesterday, Barca confirmed themselves that they will be appealing that decision to almost upgrade that Danny Alves red card to a two-match ban. They're very, very unhappy about the way that has been done. Because obviously in La Liga, for a standard red card, it's usually a one-match ban. And unless it's a really, really serious, violent conduct sort of matter, it is not usually any more than that. So that is why I'm surprised that this one here has been upgraded. Because obviously the challenge from Danny Alves on Carrasco it was high, you know, it wasn't a good tackle, and yes, it was deserving of a red card, but I think to take it further than that, to imply almost that there was malicious intent that he actually went out there to sort of hurt Carrasco, I don't think there was that at all, and Danny Alves, as you can see, very, very unhappy with that treatment from La Liga. But of course, what that suspension will mean is that this weekend, certainly, I'm sure that we're going to see Serginho Dest in that right-back position, and to be honest, even without that Danny Alves red card, I would have thought about including Dest anyway, because of the game after the one at the weekend. Because let's not forget, Danny Alves is not included in our Europa League squad. And given that we play Napoli next Thursday, it's probably not a bad idea here that Des gets some game time, maybe gets some confidence under his belt ahead of that one. And of course, if that ban is upheld, Dest has the chance here to play three successive games in this Barcelona team. And I really do feel as though He's got to take that chance. This is a massive opportunity for him in some tough games as well. And I really, really do hope that he proves himself. But from one Brazilian in Dani Alves to another in Felipe Coutinho. And of course, his return to the Premier League is looking a very, very good decision indeed for all parties. Because obviously he started in stunning fashion with his debut against Man United. And what he did last night against Leeds was absolutely fantastic. Real confidence he's playing with right now. He scored a goal and got two assists in 13 minutes. Which means that he now has two goals and two assists in his three Premier League appearances so far. And of course, all of this is not only good news for Coutinho, good news for Aston Villa, but it could also be very, very good news when it comes to Barca. Because Aston Villa, as we know, hold a 40 million euro buy option for the summer. After that loan spell has come to an end, they have the option to buy Coutinho for 40 million. And I've said it before, but if Aston Villa do want to make that permanent, if they are really happy with Coutinho, I wouldn't hang around. I would not hang around at all in activating that clause, because if this form continues, if Coutinho continues playing the way he is in the Premier League, there's going to be plenty of other English clubs, I feel, come the summer having a really good look at him. And I think for a player who in the summer, Coutinho will be 30 years old, he'll be entering the final year of his contract. If we could get that kind of sum and, of course, remove those huge wages too, what a deal that could be for us. And with the way Coutinho's playing, it would be perfect for everyone involved. But from one January outgoing to one January incoming, because I also do want to talk once again about Adama Trier, who of course made a brilliant, brilliant start on his return to the club against Atletico Madrid. And of course, when you're looking at Coutinho as well, performing again now in the Premier League, it is clear that, you know, something that works in the Premier League may not always work in La Liga and vice versa as well. They're two very, very different leagues. But I think one thing, especially looking at the players that we brought in in January from the Premier League, the likes of Adama, 
Yama, Ferran Torres, Aubameyang, those players coming in, what I really want to see them bring is that intensity, that real high level intensity that we often do see game in, game out at the top level in the Premier League. And it was interesting that this week it has emerged that from Monday to Thursday, every single week, Adama Traore he does double training sessions because apparently there he'll do the standard first team training session with the rest of the group. But then alongside that, he'll also do a session on his own individually there to basically keep up that peak physical level. You know, we all know that he keeps himself in absolutely perfect condition and he's going to continue that now at Barca, working very, very hard and paying attention as well to his nutrition. And I think that is the kind of preparation, that's the kind of training and indeed the kind of dedication that we need to get back competing again at the very top level. We all remember, of course, when we faced Bayern Munich, Thomas Muller coming out and saying basically that Barca have the quality, they have the players at their disposal, but they don't have that intensity to go toe-to-toe -to -toe right now with the best of them. We've got to get that back. And Xavi, of course, is already going to be putting those methods in place to get that edge back. And it's exactly the kind of level that we saw, and in abundance against Atletico Madrid. But finally, guys, what I do want to talk to you about is the progress right now on the contract renewal of Ronald Araujo, because, of course, this season he has been absolutely spectacular at the heart of our defence. And this is a deal right now that we're all waiting around, waiting, hoping, and just believing that good things are going to come, because we want to see this man remain at the club for many, many years indeed. His current contract expires in the summer of 2023, and negotiations right now have been ongoing for a little bit of time over an agreement there until until 2027, with Araujo looking to be valued and looking for an increase on his current contract. And like I said before, that is very much justified because it recently emerged that the kind of contract that Araujo is currently on actually equates there to less than one million per year. The current deal that he's on sees him earn less than 20,000 euros a week. And I think we can all understand and we can all see why he is looking for an increase on that. But I think right now, why the negotiations are going on maybe a bit longer than maybe we've seen in the past, there's one reason for that and one very good reason. It's because gone are the days of Bartomeu, when he would have said basically to any player who came his way, whatever you want, you can have it. If you're demanding this amount, you can have this amount. And of course, then that causes a problem with other players, because if you give one exactly what they want, another one will come along, they'll want more, then they'll want more, and it's a big knock-on effect. And that is why we've got to have a very, very strict policy with our wages. That is what Laporta and Almani are very, very keen to do now. And although Araujo will certainly receive bigger offers elsewhere than what he is going to be offered at Barcelona, he is going to be given an increase, but it's not going to be as high as maybe some of those Premier League offers, I still maintain that he wants to be here. We are going to see commitment here from both sides. The club are going to offer him more money. They're going to give him a contract where he can feel valued. But at the same time as well, we will be looking for some loyalty. We'll be looking for some effort there from Araujo, who I truly do believe wants to make a name for himself here. He wants to become a real leading figure at this club in the years to come. And just have a look at this. This was last week, actually, after a training session. Both Eric Garcia and Araujo stayed behind after that session to watch some of the Barca youngsters who are in action there in the Cadet A derby against Espanyol. This is a player who loves this club. He's been here for many years of his life and I think now he's starting to see it as his home. We want him to stay here and I do believe in time that will happen. And so indeed, guys, that is the latest Barca news for, of course, this weekend. We are going to start getting excited and really looking forward to that weekend's game against Espanyol. What is so, so important now is that we kick on after that brilliant win against Atletico, follow it up with another in the derby match. All of the build-up and all of the latest coming ahead of that game very soon. Thank you indeed for joining me here today. Leave me your thoughts down below. And of course... I will see you soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and for supporting. But until next time, as always, Vishka El Basa. Uh -huh.